Hey guys, my name is Jeff O'Connor and I want to welcome you to my shop here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. First off, if you're from Instagram, you follow me over this channel. I want to thank you for your continued support over the years. And if you're new to O'Connor Woodworking, thanks for joining me on YouTube. Where I wanted to start today for episode one was to give you guys a shop tour and show you where all the action takes place here during the day for me. Um, when I have people visit me in my Virginia Beach shop, first thing we do is we have a toast here. I usually have an Irish whiskey with a, a couple shot glasses for guys that come to visit. We do a toast to our fallen brothers and then we carry out with the day. So we can't virtually drink here today. So that's a tradition I have in the shop. So if you're ever here to visit, pop on by. Secondly, I've got Hans here with me. Hans is a gift from Germany and he's made of solid beech wood. You've seen him in the videos. He is my best friend, my little confidant here in the shop, and he's a, a really good brush for the table here. So you'll see him a lot in the videos to come. Also made of beech wood is my actual bench. This is a, a German bench made by Hoffman & Hammer, solid beech top, and I, I love this bench. I do all my work here. For those of you that have followed me on Instagram already know that through my hand tool woodworking, I get a lot of inner peace, and this is kind of my zen time here at the bench. So 90% of my work is done here, and this is my home, and I love it. Uh, another thing I do when I come in, I always have music playing on my Marshall speaker there, always some type of Irish music or traditional or Irish punk, and I always light a candle, and just that process itself kind of sets the mood for me within my shop. So with this bench, what I really like about it is we have a traditional vise here, but we also have a European tail vise on this side. And what's neat about the European tail vise is that if I'm cutting half-blind dovetails, I can set the wood at an angle in the vise and I can get a really good angle to cut with so I'm not breaking my back to try to set it up otherwise. You can do it on with other vices, but it's a little bit easier like this for me. And one of the reasons I really like the European tail vise. Also, here's my chair. So this chair is a 1952 dentist chair, and I found this um, at an antique store, and I, I love this thing. It's really well crafted. The casters are still 100%, so good piece of nostalgia. I love antiques, so that's where I do it, where I sit and do all my dovetailing. On the wall here are all my hand tools. This is everything I use for any joinery I'm doing by hand. I've got various chisels. I've got all my hand tool saws. I've got all of my marking devices. Everything I use on this bench is on the wall in quick reach for me. Just a, a simple plywood backing here that I just adjust and I, as I add new tools, I make new holders for them. One of the special things I've got here, which is a reminder for me of my beginnings here, is my Rob Cosman Purple Heart Project hockey puck. Now, for those of you that know my past, I went to Rob's Par uh, Purple Heart Project back in 2019 and it absolutely changed my life. And even though I had been woodworking for over 20 years at that point, his course made me feel so peaceful inside and it helped me do my transition from the bomb squad to woodworking. And I'll have an episode on that whole process coming up uh, later in the year. But I keep this hockey puck here and that reminds me of, of Rob and all he's done for us veterans. So this is the bench area. Now we're gonna shift over to the milling area and show you kind of how the flow of the shop goes. This is my turning area. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later on the video. So why don't we come on over here. The, air, the milling area now is set up so that as I come into the shop with wood, I can start my milling process on this side and not have to worry about getting too much dust on the other side of the shop where I don't really want it. On this wall here is where I keep my lumber that I'm gonna be doing uh, work with for the next 30 days. So outside I keep most of my lumber that's gonna be stored out there throughout the year. When it's ready to do a project, I have something coming up, I'll bring it in here and that'll acclimate in the shop and be ready to work pretty quickly. So here I've got my first saw when I start my process. This is my compound miter saw from DeWalt. It's a great saw, good capacity to cut. If you never had a compound miter saw, I highly recommend those versus a, a standard chop saw. Over here is where the milling process starts. So I've got my 2000V uh, Powermatic table saw. This is a five horsepower saw. This will cut through eight quarter 
white oak like it's balsa wood. Amazing motor on this thing, very well balanced, great saw. I also have the slider capacity on here where I can cut sheet goods. Consider this like a very large crosscut saw or crosscut uh, jig. Really, really nice for large sheets of plywood, especially in a one man shop. Over here, we've got Hans watching over the router table. And the router table attachment to the table saw is very convenient because if you look at the, the tape I have down here, when I take the, the router table fence off, it extends the length of my bench or my, uh, my table saw quite a bit. So I have a lot more working area. In the mount here, I've got a three horsepower porta uh, port cable router that just stays there. It's my, it's my mounted uh, router. I don't move that anywhere else. If we shift over here, we start looking at two other milling tools that I have. We've got my joiner and we've got my planer. Both are Powermatic as the table saw is. I love Powermatic tools. Their customer service is through the roof. Their machining, their balance, everything's great. So I tend to have these versus any other uh, large power tools in my shop. The Powermatic joiner here is eight inches and this is a 60 HH. So it's got a helical head. The helical heads, I, I really recommend over the straight edge cutters. The, it's got a four-sided cutter here, and I think I've only changed, rotated the cutters one time in the last three years. And I've put a lot of dense wood through here, so it's a great, a great tool to have. The planer, same thing, helical head. This is the 209HH. This is a 20-inch planer, plenty of room, and this will eat through white oak, hickory, very, very easily. This is a, a recent upgrade for me. I used to have the 735 DeWalt which was also an awesome planer, the little bench top one, but just got to be getting bogged down a little bit too much when I was going heavy with the uh, larger pieces of white oak and so forth. One of the tricks I use in this shop here, which I wanted to show you, is I have these magnetic trays that are mounted to all my machines. And within the trays, I usually have the hex wrenches and any screw heads that I use for that particular machine. So if I've got to do quick adjustments, I'm not looking around my shop trying to find the tool. I keep them all here and I stick that guy on the side of it, and it's always there when I need it. So the fourth machine that we have in the milling process here is my bandsaw. So this is from Powermatic also. This is the bandsaw, the 1500 Powermatic. Really good uh, resaw capacity. It's a three horsepower saw. What I really like about this particular one is when I do resawing, I don't do resawing with a fence. For those of you who have used a bandsaw and fence to resaw, you know that adjusting for the blade drift can be kind of a pain and you have to do it consistently. Um, for me, it's much easier if I just do, where I want to resaw, I just do a mark on each side, straight line, and I use this resaw guide bar that comes with the, the bandsaw, and as I feed it through, I can make the adjustments as needed to follow that line. And it works really, really well. One of the coolest features, I think, of this bandsaw. So now I'll take you into the center here in the center of the four machines, I control my dust two ways. One is with a straight dust collection system into the machine. So this is the Oneida Mini Gorilla. It's an awesome machine. I think it's a horse and a half. But I have a Rockler connection here, the dust strike connectors, which are phenomenal for just what I do in my shop. I have one of these on each machine, and when I'm getting ready to do any machining, pop it on there, do my work here, and I just move it wherever I need it within my space. In a one-man shop with relatively small maneuverability, this works great for me. If you're in a shop where you've got three, four guys, you know, the, the five horsepower corner mount units, probably your best bet. But for me, this works awesome. Over here, I've got my second method of collection, which is my Powermatic filtration system. So this is where we're taking all that particulate out of the air, that cancer-causing type stuff and I run this at the same time so I can keep control of this. And this also keeps a lot of that fine particulate from floating over into my finishing area. Next on our tour here is my CNC machine. So this is made by Axiom. This is the AR8 Pro. I absolutely love this machine. On this particular CNC, you can also mount a laser attachment. They sell the JTEC laser attachment as well. And why that's important for guys like me is I'm kind of a bonehead when it comes to software and computers. So this machine does it all. And I have one software, I have a Spire, where I can do the CNC or I can do the laser engraving and load that into my system and run it. I don't have to learn two separate systems. So very cool for me. Great CNC. If, you if you're in the market to get one, take a look at Axiom because I have called these guys so many times with questions. 
and they're always 100% there supporting me and I get back in the shop and do the work. And one guy even called me on a Sunday one time because he was thinking about the problem I had. So awesome company, awesome machine. I can't speak highly enough about Axiom. So over here, we're moving on to where I do a lot of my resin infusion. So if you guys have been on Instagram, you know I make fighting sticks. I've been involved in martial arts my whole life and I, I love fighting sticks. What I do with these, I'll take a solid piece of wood and I'll put it in my container here that's filled with a resin. I'll use my vacuum to pull all the air out and once the air is out of the wood itself, I'll turn the vacuum off. And at that point, the resin then soaks into the wood. That whole process takes about three days. And after that's done, I'll take the wood, I'll pop it in the oven for a couple hours. And when I take it out, it's pretty much indestructible. So it's a really cool process. I use what's called cactus juice in the tube, if you guys are familiar with that. Really good stuff, cures very well. Take it to the lathe and, and you've got an indestructible piece of wood there. Use it for malice as well. Next stop on the tour here is my finishing area. This is my table I use for finishing. I like a nice big table because I do a lot on it. I can put a couple pieces up here. I can do refinishing. I can do a bunch of stuff because of the size of it. Over here is my rack where I keep all my finishes. I primarily will use just a few different finishes. General finishes, tried and true, Rewax, wax Rubio Monaco, and Liberon are, are, are pretty much my go-tos for all my finishes. But they're easy access to the finishing table here and I keep a lot of my other uh, lubrication and so forth on the side of the wall here as well. Our next stop on the tour then is going to be my Festool table here. So this table, I got into Festool probably about two years ago and to be honest, I thought that people were kind of out of their minds when they used to talk about Festool. And then I realized once I bought my first Festool item with the sander that their tools are absolutely phenomenal very, very well designed. The engineering is incredible on them. And so now I've got my, my cutters, my uh, domino joinery, as well as my sanding is all done here. This is the MFT table, their multifunction table. I take this to restoration sites when I'm doing working on site. I also lose, use it in here for a lot of my cutting and all my sanding as well. Really, really good table. I've got the dust collection system on the bottom there and hook right in. I can sand on this table mask free because of how good that collection system is from Festool. So could not be happier with that. The next part of the sanding that we have here, this is the 2550 drum sander from Supermax, as well as my Jet Boss oscillating sander. So I use these quite a bit for obviously different projects. The 2550 is great because I can do a lot with tabletops on this. If you change the grid on this thing, you can do about three grits I'll use for most tabletops. And with a 50 inch diameter across here, I can do 25 inches, flip it, and do another 25 inches. You can do a pretty large tabletop with this sander. Really high quality, solid as a rock, so I'm really happy with that. The last stop we're gonna do here is gonna be my turning section. So within the, the turning section here of the shop, I also have another filtration system. And this doesn't get too much work. I only have it over here really to help collect from whatever comes across from the other side of the shop. Um, I don't get a whole lot of particulate dust really when I'm turning, but it does collect what I need. This is the Nova Galaxy DVR, and probably my favorite tool in the shop, honestly. What I love most about this particular lathe is the DVR feature, which allows me to digitally control my speeds. And if you guys have turned before, you know how frustrating it can be when you have to go up and down in speeds, when you're sanding, when you're going back to cutting, and just varying that as you go along the process. Instead of having to change bands on your, on your lathe, that digital process is phenomenal. This is a great lathe that was recommended to me by a few people, and I'm really glad I got this. My second lathe is the Excelsior from uh, Rockler, which I've had probably my oldest tool in the shop. And, uh, Absolutely love it. This is what I started turning on. I still turn on it with a lot of my shave brushes, muddlers, the smaller items that I make. I'll pop them on here. I also use it for my Beal uh, buffing system as well. So awesome little lathe. However, I am in the process of upgrading that right now. In fact, I've got the new uh, Comet here. I bought a refurbished Nova Comet. Uh, it also has a DVR feature on it for digital readouts for the lathe. So. I'll be selling this one and replacing it because I've gotten addicted to being able to adjust my speed with that knob. So the smaller lathe is going to have that as well. 
Lastly, I want to talk about my, my tools here. I use carbide tools primarily when I, when I turn. And I'm in the process now, my New Year's resolution was to learn how to uh, actually turn with high speed tools. So I took a, a class at Woodcraft to try to get better at that process because it is, it is a, a better finish when you use high speed tools. I started with carbide and because I'm not really, I, would, I wouldn't consider myself a professional turner. I turn out of necessity and I, I started because I had to make some knobs and that for some antiques I was doing and the carbides are very easy to learn, they're very easy to get to, to the point where you're pretty efficient with them, but you do have to do a lot more sanding in my opinion. So this year I'm going to be transitioning into my high speed tools. I'll probably still use these occasionally, but I'd like to try to get better at the art of turning. So that's it in a nutshell for me. Uh, as we walk back over to the bench here, I just wanted to show you real quick my sharpening area on the bench. Now, when I took Rob Cosman's Purple Heart Project, uh, his is set up exactly like this, and this is, this is how I think it's most efficient. He only uses two stones for his sharpening, and they're at a lower level, as you can see, compared to where my legs are, because when you're sharp, the way Rob teaches you to sharpen is you're using your body weight to kind of move the blade across, and it's really an efficient way to sharpen. I highly recommend it. What I would suggest is you go on to Rob Cosman's YouTube site and take a look at his how he sharpens chisels, and you'll never do it another way again. It's the most efficient, especially if you're going in between uh, chisels. It gets you to the point of being able to work very, very quickly again instead of having to go through a long process to sharpen. So really great process. Check it out on YouTube. We're back here at the center again, back here where the whole shop began, and I want to thank you guys for joining me. This is where everything happens for me. I wanna thank you for following me on the YouTube. I cannot wait to see you again for the next episode. And I gotta to get to work, I'm gonna head over here because as I always tell my wife, this wood ain't gonna work itself. Until next time, I'm Jeff O'Connor and thanks for joining me.